Thanks, Glenn, and welcome to our Wednesday of Holy Week service. We're up in the sanctuary today because we've got the community fun day downstairs with real farm animals from Mills Ark Farm. So pigs and donkeys and sheep and goats. And the trick is to see if you can work out which are sheep and which are goats. Um, the clue is the sheep have woolly jumpers on. Quite literally, they've got red woolly jumpers on. So it's quite wonderful. Um, and we've had well over 100, 150 people here this morning already for the farm. Um, and then it starts again this afternoon. So as we come together today, it seems appropriate that the thought for today focuses on all creatures great and small, and all things bright and beautiful. And so we're going to remain seated if you want, or stand if you wish, and sing together that wonderful hymn, All Things Bright and Beautiful, or Creatures Great and Small. Let's, let's sing together. Teach them, we ask, to sustain the weary with a 
word. Wake then, we pray, morning by morning to the wisdom of God. Strengthen them for the sake of truth, not to hide or turn back, but to follow calling and principle and need. Give them confidence as you gave it to Jesus, to stand and not to shrink, to speak for goodness and hope. And if suffering comes, to bear with it without shame. So be with us this day, Lord, as we pray for the world, as we're part of the world. Be with us as we think of your creation around us, of the beauty around us, of all creatures, great and small. Sustain us today, Lord, as we worship together. Amen. So a reading from John's Gospel, John chapter 13, verses 21 to 32. And I'm not sure if you know, I didn't put it on the screen. So you're going to have to listen to that, I'm afraid. So I think, yeah, that is. After he said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at each other, at a loss to know which of them he meant. So one of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him, Simon Peter, and, motioned, and he motioned to this disciple and said, ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? And Jesus answered, it's the one to whom I will give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. So Jesus told him, what you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival, or to give something to the poor. As soon as Jesus had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. When he was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself, and will glorify him at once. May God add his blessing to these words. Amen. We have the wonderful ability of hindsight to look at these stories. And when it comes to the world, we wish we had the ability to look at it with hindsight as well with the things that we do to our planet and the world and how it affects things. And today, particularly with the petting farm outside, with the animals there, we look at the donkeys and the goats and the sheep and the pigs, and we all go, oh, you know. And I was cajoled, I think is the best word, on Monday into buying, no, into agreeing um, to having another two gerbils. So we now have a menagerie of four, and we've got a gerbil high rise in our living room. And which is quite fun. And I have to say, even though I was cajoled into it, they are absolutely adorable. However, the latest two, I cannot tell them apart at all. Because they're both twins, fairly identical. Apparently one of them has a white spot on its black paw. I can tell you, I can't see that well. But it's just wonderful to watch them play. We were watching them. We were also watching a film called Captain Nova on Netflix. It's one that's gone straight to um, Netflix, it's a PG, and it's about a girl called Nova, who is sent back in time to warn a younger man of a game drilling in the Arctic, and to speak out about what's going on and the consequences. It took a while to get our head around what was going on, but it is a spectacular film that speaks so much of the world. But when she travelled back in time, she went back in age as well. So she went back 25 years. And when she 
landed back on Earth, she was only 12. And so, because she was 12, nobody listened. And it makes you wonder. As we look at our world, and as we listen to the story today, we only see Jesus having that similar frustration. He was saying the words, but nobody was understanding. Nobody was really listening. They all assumed that Judas would go out and buy what was needed. There may be some there that assumed he was going to possibly disappear with the money, if they were of that sceptical mind. But Jesus said, what you're about to do, do so quickly. Jesus knew the events that were coming. He knew what was happening that week and was prepared for them. We sometimes spend too much time focusing on the glory and the joy of Palm Sunday. And now midweek through, our prayer reminded us that the detritus of that celebration was being cleared up. And people were pondering who this Jesus was. And the crowds that were shouting, make way, make way for the King of Kings, which we'll sing in a minute, were starting to mutter, who is he? What's he all about? It's only a carpenter, a bloke from Nazareth. Nazareth. Why should we listen? But Jesus knew and was doing his best to prepare his disciples. So as we journey through Holy Week, Let's make sure that we listen carefully, because sometimes that prophetic voice comes from young children, comes from people that we don't know, and the most unexpected places. We must take time to listen to God speaking to us in the most unexpected of ways. And especially in 2022, and the challenge we have is about how we care for and support our environment for generations to come. So today we celebrate the fact that God has the whole world in his hands, that he's made way for us and loves us. And so as we come to prayer, we're going to sing that wonderful hymn that we didn't sing on Sunday, but we're going to sing today. And that's make way, make way for Christ the King in splendor arrives to remind us halfway through Holy Week that it is the King Jews, our King and Saviour, that we're totally focused on this week. Come. Um. 
midway through Holy Week, we pray that you would be with us. As we're midway through Holy Week, we see grumbles and unhappiness in our world. As we're midway through Holy Week, the news that we see on our screens and in the media makes us cry out to you, Lord, in agony. Asking, where are you in the midst of this? So we pray for the events in the world, for places where there's war, where there's no peace, where people are displaced and go hungry. We've heard today of landslides in certain places because of natural disasters. We continue to see the news from the Ukraine and especially from Mariupol today. And we pray for those involved. We pray for those on all sides of conflict, Lord. May they search for peace so that people may have hope. And we pray for the division in our own country, for the news events coming out this week of dishonesty and the lack of integrity in government. And we pray for those involved that they would do the right thing and that their actions wouldn't overshadow the needs of so many in this nation as inflation is higher than ever. The cost of living is out of reach for some. So we pray for our nation. We pray for those within our congregation here at High Cross, especially those who are struggling because of illness, because they're caught up in the cycle of poverty, or because they're mourning the loss of loved ones. And so in the stillness we pause and we remember those known to us who need our prayers this day. And we pray this day, Lord, that your spirit would continue to pour out and work through my cross. We thank you for the Community Fund Day, for the work that Sam and her team have put in, and the numbers that have come. We ask that your blessing would be upon all those who have attended the Fund Day today, that they wouldn't just enjoy the animals, but would see your glory in them, and the love that's shared through members of High Cross Church. Lord, we thank you so much for this day, and pray that it will continue to keep us the heart of community, where all are loved and cared for. So let's just be still for a moment as we bring you our own prayers. And so we bring our prayers together in the prayer that you taught us as we say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into to our final hymn, and you can do the actions if you want as well, because it's a wonderful hymn. He's got the whole world in his hands. Let's see it stand and sing together. He's got the whole